athletes or clients to them barefoot on like something softer than this ground. So I'll show you what they look like and I'll let you make the decision if you want to take your shoes off and do it. They are better, obviously precision is better through barefoot, but do whatever you can for right now, okay? So our first form of self-assessment is gonna be active range of motion. Okay, and this is, you know, everyone should kind of know these. So the first one is, hey, can you touch your toes? Right, so I want everyone to reach forward and do a toe touch for me. Good, come up. Good, come back down. Good, okay. So everyone kind of has a baseline, kind of see how you're feeling today. Next, we're gonna do a rotation, so I'm gonna put my hands here. I'll keep the head, I don't care if the head stays or comes with it, as long as you reassess the same way. So I'll probably just say bring it with you. So rotate, and then rotate the other way. Just kind of pay attention to where you are on the wall. Good, flexion, shoulder, I'm sorry, this is abduction. So this ah, feels good today, or there's my ear, okay? Shoulder extension, again, could just be pain. Okay. I like to toe touch and rotation the best. So now you guys have an idea on how you're moving, right? That's a full body screen, by the way, okay? So next we have strength. So this would be as if you're into maybe kettlebell pressing, you could give it an RPE, right? If you do any lifts or anything. Third is gonna be balance, because again, the balance system is intimately connected to the visual system. A lot of integration happens. Having good balance should be priority for a lot of people. So let's just try standing on one foot. Close your eyes. Okay, switch feet. When you get set, close your eyes. All right, relax. Okay, so maybe you have a side that was maybe easier, harder. Yes. Okay, so some people get a lot out of it, some people don't. You gotta make this stuff work for yourself. And third would be basically functional activities. We say, what can you do? <laughs> and my knee goes owie when I do stuff. Okay, well, let's work on that, okay? So the first drill, and we're gonna kind of hopefully be able to make it through what we call our six high payoff exercises. These are exercises that it doesn't matter who you are, everyone needs, and then we're gonna get into some visual stuff and then work on some balance and get you guys out of here, right? So the first thing we're gonna work on is called an ankle tilt, all right? So I'm gonna take my shoes off so you guys can see this if you want to, great. If not, no big deal. The area I'm trying to target is called my talocalcaneal joint. It's a fancy term for my heel, which is really important because my Achilles tendon attaches there and a lot of other stuff, right? But I have kind of a line. So if I go to the ground and this bone right here, everyone could probably do it in shoes. If you creep down, you have a line. And if I roll my hair, come up here. Face that way. Put a uh, quarter turn. Put your right foot in front. Okay, there's a small line right here that kind of separates the two joints. So if she rolls it to the outside, that's what we're trying to look for. Okay, flatten the foot, roll it, good. roll it again. Good. Does that make sense? Now, these are super, can I actually use you? Because you're your toe touch, you're barely to the ground. Okay, you might taking your shoes off real quick. So my feet are gonna look weird because I'm close to you. Okay, that's okay. <clears throat> Good. Face them. So, I don't know, did you guys see, well, you, can you take your other shoe off too? Mm -hmm. Is okay? All right, did you guys see where her toe touch was before? No. no. Okay, so let's have her show it. So do the toe touch. Ah, so close. All right, let's see what we can do, okay? So the foot goes forward. So bring one foot forward. Good. And then she's gonna roll it to the outside. So roll it. Good, and she's doing the best that she can. Maintain, like, flatten it and do that two more times. Roll. Good. Do you feel a stretch at all there? Um, no. Okay. That's okay. Switch sides. Good. How's that side feel? About the same? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, not tight. So you might have a side that's tighter than the other. I prefer when people don't feel this stuff. Duh. Let's reassess and try your toe touch now. Okay, that helped. Okay. All right, so that's probably good. Okay. All right, better? Yeah. How long did that take? Seconds. seconds, all right. That's how fast the brain works. Why did that work for the toe touch? Why Better signals. Her? Better signals. All comes down to threat. That's it. Novel movement that didn't hurt. She didn't feel it. She had joint movement. Mechanical receptor input went up the spinal cord, went up to the brain. The brain goes, oh wow, you haven't done this. You mean 
moving my, especially if they got foot, I don't know her history or whatever, um, if people aren't used to moving their feet, they're like, oh, I hate how my feet touch or whatever, that's a huge area. And all of a sudden you're lighting that area up, you go, oh man, wow, I see the light, that's how I do it, and that's what happens. Oh, well you do it, it pops to the ground in two drills, no problem. She knows though, if she exercises, I mean shape, she should make sure every exercise she does leaves her at that. That's simple, all right? So everyone's gonna put, you can put your shoes on and keep them off this here. So everyone's gonna put one foot in front, lengthen up, roll the ankle, you can go as hard as you can, don't worry about it. Good, flatten the foot, roll it, flatten the foot, roll it, flatten the foot, roll it, and then other side. And ask yourself, does it feel the same? If it does, great. If not, okay. Now everyone reassess the toe touch. Okay, good. Try rotation. Okay, better, worse, better. Or the same, I mean, it's not a, I mean, it literally, is, I mean, they're still good to do, it's just, wow, this is a great one, or it's just one you have to not really worry about, all right? So the next one we're going to take care of is called the middle toe pull, and what this takes care of is you have a row of bones in your foot called your cuneiforms, and they do a lot of really cool stuff, but for right now, how you stretch them is the right foot comes back here, and I try to point the toe. Now, what you want to, you don't want to do, and it's kind of hard on yourself, that actually looks really good. Um, can you use an example here? Turn around, and, no, just turn around and face them, yeah. So if you look at her foot, that's like awesome. The foot, it, it's straight down. What you see a lot of compensations is they do that, the knee caves in, the knee caves out. That's not precision. Those are two different drills we're trying to work on later on. That foot's got to go straight back. That looks really good, all right? So then once you're back there, and you can go any distance you want. Like Amy's a runner, so I would put her into her stride length and do the drills from there. It could be wherever. So while you're here, lengthen up and then do a couple of knee bends, and you should feel a stretch in the top of that foot, yes? Yes. Okay. And then switch sides. Really make sure if you're in shoes, shoelaces should be pointing down at an angle. Good. And then what do you think I'm going to ask you to do? Reassess. Okay. Whoa. That, that, that wasn't as good as your ankle toe. Okay. So now what happens, this happened last time I actually spoke. Someone's like, oh, well, I'm just warmed up. And you go, okay. And the next drill, she's like, well, she got worse. Yeah. Okay. She got worse. That was yours. But the, but the ankle toe was Ankle toe was better. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. You can't pick and choose. Like, you don't get to pick your inputs. It's all coming in. You All your simple thing is good, bad. Don't do it. Like, you like, oh, I do this great stretch, I feel it, you know, I stretch out my quads every time before I run, yeah, it feels great, and then she's losing three inches on her toe touch. That's what we're talking about, all right? So the ankle tilt, and this is the middle toe, uh, middle toe pull. The next one's an outside toe pull, and there is a, you kind of come down here, and if you find your kind of bony landmark again, it's called your malleoli, and if you kind of creep your fingers up, you'll feel a little, it's called a sinus, it's a little indentation. You feel it there? Mm -hmm. That's where you're trying to feel this next drill, okay? So if we set that middle toe pull, the foot goes back here completely with the hips straight. When I do it this way, I actually drop my heel to the outside, but my knee is still straight. I lengthen up that whole tall spine thing, and then I do my drops. Just drop two or three each side. Good. And then reassess rotation. All right, whatever. Or you can do toe touch. Maybe it was all about skin. All right, go ahead. You can do toe touch. Wait. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Better, worse, the same? Better. Better. Better? Better. Yeah, it looks like you're getting further. Same? Yeah. Same? Well, this much better than the beginning. Right. Yeah. yeah. And how, let I me mean, think about this. How long does this take? Seconds, okay. literally, like seconds, guys. Let's go, like seconds, okay? <laughs> All right, so now we're talking about the hip. We'll skip the knee. Um, there are knee circles. Everything we do in Z Health in the beginning stages, if I work with somebody, um, it's all kind of single joint circular motion. So this is a knee circle, and then this is a knee circle here, okay? We can kind of talk about that later if you want to. So the hips, what kind of, so uh, what kind of joint is it? Socket. Ball and socket, yeah. okay? So one end sits in my pelvis, my pelvis sits on top, and I can move it around a lot of positions, all right? I have never met 
anybody who can control their hips, who has any kind of IT band, hip issues, hip flexor issue, ever. It doesn't happen. All of your muscles, the reason we do all joint work is all the muscles that pass through the hip, you're gonna be moving anyway. So there's no reason for them to be tight because you're already taking them through range of motion. That kind of makes sense? Mm -hmm. Sort of, okay. So first thing we have to do is find what's called our rehab position, okay? And how we do this, um, I like to hold on to something for balance. I recommend it when you're first learning the, um, or practicing the drills at home. There's tons of YouTube stuff, and I mean, this information is somewhat readily available online. Um, but the idea is to not be, oh, I'm off balance, you're not gonna hit the target. Does that make sense? Okay. So what you're gonna do is one leg's gonna come out in front slightly. I'm gonna take my finger, I'm gonna make a C. I'm gonna put it kind of right here. And wherever my middle finger is, if I kind of rotate, I sh that should be my hip crease. You should feel kind of movement there. Does that, everyone feel movement? Okay, we want to be able to, this is not a hip circle. So if you guys teach this stuff, or you're, you're, you're trying to learn this stuff, make sure it's the actual hip with the ankle staying straight and not that. Does that make sense? So now what we're gonna do is you're gonna rotate it out all the way and then rotate it in. And now does anyone have a side or a way that's tighter? Okay, so you're gonna hold that position. For most people it's in, and you're gonna do full hip circles. Make sure you're clearing your back leg. Clear the back leg. Good. So now if you circle in or out? You want to do both directions. Yeah. And because it's a hip, you can do cross. I'm only showing you the like I have an hour and 15 minutes. So you can do cross body front. You can figure out how you need to do them. It doesn't matter, okay? Um, it works really good for like, I'll use Amy because I know she runs. Yeah, my hip really hurts here. Okay, well then do your hip drills in that position maybe while you're doing other stuff. Okay, so now test the other side. Don't just presume it's the same. And if you don't have one, if it feels kind of like neutral, then the knee's straight ahead. And you can actually, why don't you step forward a little bit so you can, so maybe we can kick you. It wasn't planned. Chin up, tall spine. Good. Now, what you see a lot, yeah, I recommend not doing it by chairs. Um, make sure if you're doing this anywhere and you're holding onto a wall, Always do the outside leg because you'll, you'll, like, you'll limit your range of motion just because you don't want to hit the wall. And the other thing I see a lot of people do is they'll miss the actual extension part. So we're not saying this, we're saying is just make sure you can actually get it back behind you, okay? Uh, the last kind of thing you'll see a lot of too, if people go, oh, I'm in, and they do that. Compensation blur, you know, not, do you see what I just did? So if they're holding it in, they may get to a point where it flares out and then does that. So we, when we say in, we mean keep it in. And you'll, you'll get a glute workout for sure, because your glutes do what? Extend your hip and externally rotate. Okay, well, you don't have to, like, duh. Okay, everyone reassess. Well, it got tighter. Tighter, okay. Mm -hmm. so too. Okay, so now go back, so now if this happens, if you're following what we call a neural warm-up and you're doing stuff like, oh man, that was worse, go back to the drill that made you better. Ankle tilts, ten, ankle tilts and foot drills tend to do really good for most people. So just hit a couple and then reassess. Better? Yeah. Cool, questions so far? Better? All right. Better? All right, cool. So, obviously we can do pelvic drills. These are just pelvic tilts. Hip hikes, full circles. I don't want to, I kind of want to just stick with what I have. Just know that you can do all these things, okay? So we're gonna skip the lumbar spine and go to the thoracic spine, okay? Um, if you guys, you guys ever like heard of people with like upper cross syndrome? You ever seen this? And what are they told to do for it? Stretch your pecs and you're like, yeah, but my spine is rounded. I'm not sure how targeting musculature is gonna change the actual things that's holding the musculature, but I'll give it a shot. And they're like, it doesn't work, but I'm like, you end up with this now. Pinch nerves, crappy range of motion. Okay, so the idea here is to move only the thoracic spine. Okay, and do you guys know how many vertebrae we have in the thoracic spine? Between 11 and 13 would be 12. Very good. A lot of good things happen here. Right, a lot of good things. So 
how this looks, I always teach it. I just, it's a habit, I've been doing it for years, is I put my fingers on my sternum. It also works really well if you take like a, uh, a yoga block, because it gives you an external target to try to go through. But the idea is I'm trying to glide my thoracic spine forward and back, so it would be like this. And then I open up, so it's not this. There's a big distinct difference. Some people think of the collarbones being pulled down and they exhale as they do that, and then open up. Push it back. Yeah. Um, you wanna come up here for a second? Yeah. Okay. So a good way to do it, what we try to find, if, if we want movement, we, want, we don't want lines. If you ever wanna see lines when we move, we wanna see arches. Because arches look, they look prettier versus like rigid, right? Everything's, everything should be archy. So have a seat. Slide forward just a little bit. So first thing we'll do is we'll just take a look and I'm saying that this is her thoracic spine. I don't wanna see any flat spots. spots. So put your fingers here and then push back whenever you're ready. <laughs> what do you want me to, I, I, just, see, I was doing this, but then- No, I that was fine. No, do this. No, do what you were doing. That's fine. So now I would say tuck the chin and it, it's kind of hard here, but you can see it's, I don't know if you can tell it's a little flat here. Okay. So again, sensory feeds motor. You feel where I'm tapping? Yes. Push back. Push back. <laughs> ah, I'm confused. I am confused. Right. Push. Better. And then if you see the lower back move, I kind of sometimes put my hand here or push back. There. Open up. Open up spine. Open up a little more if you can. Good. Push back. Tuck the chin. And I like to exhale too, so I go and then open up. Good. So that's how you kind of want to hit it. Reassess. Okay. And then try and do so. Well, what was your assessment? Yeah, whatever you're assessing. All right, let's see. <laughs> that's pretty good. I'll take that as good. Okay. Better? Yes. Okay. So that's kind of how you move it. So you go over the shoulder blades. You know, there's a lot of tutorials online about how to precisely train this stuff. Um, all right, so the next one, we're going to do the neck. There's a lot of neck motion, so I'm going to try to keep it simple. I'm just do like two or three. Your brain is in your neck and your vestibular system. So doing all forms of neck exercises is very good. Okay, the first one we're gonna start with is just look over the shoulders left to right. And whenever we're doing this, you wanna make sure that people aren't dropping down, that they're actually getting a clear, clear range. Does it want tighter on one side? Oh yeah. Okay, so you can do a couple different things. One, I wanna talk quickly about the compensations you'll see when people do this is they go like this. Right, and if I tilt, they do this, and if I tuck, they do this. Yeah, I think that's always story. Yeah, because every time you do it, you can't differentiate the two of them, okay? Now, what you can do, if your skin's the largest sensory organ, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't, we're gonna move on even if it doesn't, okay? Is pick your side that's tighter. So in my case, I don't know, I'll say, I'll say left side. You're gonna take your skin, put it on the clavicle, like literally on the clavicle, and then move the skin in the direction that you want the range of motion to go in. That may or may not free some people up. Yeah. I, okay, yeah. if you need it, you need it. If not, it's just another option. Does that make sense? Okay. So, okay, last one's gonna be the hands really quickly, then we're gonna sit down, we gotta talk about a couple more things. Um, hands are really, really, really important to move and have good kind of range of motion with. A lot of people in that nervous system starts to get threatened. You guys ever see people do this with their hands? Mm -hmm. This, you see it all the time. Oh, yeah. I saw a lady upstairs, I'll never forget this. She literally was fine walking out and she goes to run and both of her hands went Spider-Man all the way around the track and then they let go and she was done running. So. Yeah. It works for her, I mean, she didn't seem like she was, you know, she made it around the track, but it literally was, like I thought she was gonna like start springing webs. <laughs> but you see all kinds of weird stuff. And that, remember one of the rules, relax as much as possible. That's what you're training. Mile one just look like mile three. You know, it gets a little different if you start doing some of the strength stuff, because this, but we still want that face to be as relaxed as possible. Every facial expression you make is part of your cranial nerves. So is your neck. So people always complain about neck pain or pain everywhere else. Oh, they, they have weird facial stuff. Or they can't, you know, like just make facial expressions are good. We'll leave it at that, okay? So hands are super important, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find, this is called a radial ulnar synarthrosis. 
There's not a spelling test, thank God, because it couldn't spell it anyway. But what we're doing is you're finding a V. It's about right here in your hand. Everyone feel that? So these are called pinky lead figure eights. Um, when you're first starting to do them, I'd almost recommend finding a spot on the wall so you can actually trace the figure eight if you, if you don't have the dexterity to figure it out. So what you're gonna do is just kind of keep the hands to the side or out here, wherever, and it starts here, and then turn down, and then start to make the eight. With the, so it's gotta be like a twisty with the pinky. It's funny that since you said it, it's like then I have to cross up. Yeah, figure eight. Up, down, and then other direction should be the <laughs> index. And then you can yeah, switch them. Okay, yeah, tracing it is a lot easier. All right, and what do you think I'm gonna ask you to do? Read, or rotation or shoulder or whatever you want. <clears throat> Better or worse? Worse. Worse? Okay. Better or worse? Same. So I'll go back to that original question. Is exercise so easy that you can't screw it up? No. Of course it is. Because you have body parts that you're, if you have body part you don't respond well to. Suppose you did this and you play tennis and you always wonder why you're never better or your wrist always hurts or you have an office job. I mean, whatever it is, there's, there's a case to say no, move the joints. Move them well, tall spine. It, it's not about waiting 12 weeks for something to be not tight or tight muscles. That's not, that's, that stuff doesn't really, I don't want to say it doesn't work, but it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll just leave it at that, all right? Pull your chairs back out, have a seat. We got to talk about something else. Good question. When you're yeah.